Our peoples believe everything out there in Mother Nature is alive. That's a match club. One body, one mind, one spirit, all working together, all moving forward together, not leaving nobody behind. I am Sitaluk Mana of Kolshima, Mana of Sulakhya. My friends and relatives all know me as Rick. I am Kawitsan. I was born here on the island, Sydney, back in 1959. Being a survivor of day residential school, a black spot in life. That's what a lot of us have done our best to suppress them, hide those feelings and those emotions. The racial discrimination, the street fights, all of that, and the racism inside the school. That's something I don't want none of our younger generations to deal with or go through. being children of parents that were in residential schools and hearing some of the things that they went through. My late father asked me not to share with my siblings what happened with him in Kamloops residential school. Colonialism coming in and diluting the cultures, pushing a lot of our teachings underground so that it could survive, so that our generation can still hold on to what bits that we do have. I see how much it hurt me, how much it angered me. And that's what's really helped me out a lot is my culture. For us, we are taught PSDR, patience, self-discipline and respect. Not only natives, but non-natives as well. It's gotta start somewhere. Why does it start with us? When I first became chief, I was unhappy with what was going on in our school district. So I started spending a lot more time in the school. One of the things that we did was take this core group of people and start speaking about the things that were going on in the school. And through those conversations, we shut down the First Nations rooms that were in the schools and turned them into an all nations room. Through our Aboriginal Education Department, we saw sort of a need to have more community members in our school so that students can see different adults and learn from different people throughout their time at high school. We created this role model book with about 100 people in it, and they kept on coming to the school and teaching whatever that may be. Brother Rick was one of those role models who the school constantly focused on and were constantly calling so the school district created elders and residents, and now we have elders and residents in all of our schools in School District 62. I've been working with School District 62 since 2015. We share with them our teachings. If they're doing a subject on drum making or drumming or salmon food prepping, bread making, cedar trees, any of those subjects of native culture, they will bring in a mentor role that speaks about it. We have so many schools in our school district 62 that for me, it was such an honor to be able to go into the different schools and share different things. Like that one day, four different classes, four different topics in each different class. I don't have a degree in nothing. My degree is learning from all of my elders, the teachings, the stories. We hear them over and over again. Our culture, our way of life, is brought down through repetition, through songs and dances, carvings, knittings. Food, language, songs, stories. This is how we're taught, repetition. Sometimes he says the same thing over and over and over again, but you never forget that thing. This way, this way you have your drum that way. That's how we hold our drums, and we hit it softly like that. Every time you grab a drum, you hold it against your chest twofold. One, you're warming up that hide. The other is that drum spirit and your spirit are coming together. Learning the respect of a drum, 
but has his own spirit. Brother Rick came to the school as part of a program, Elders in Residence. He was so inclusive and so welcoming, such a huge presence in the building that he started that culture of acceptance and he's normalized it to a degree that people are able to see that it's Brother Rick. Let's get him in our math class. Let's get him in our gym class. Or just simply go have a conversation and tea with him. Sometimes teachers can be shy or scared to bring First Nations content into the classroom. Having Brother Rick, having other role models come into our classrooms, it shows teachers what they can do. They learn from Brother Rick, like myself, and I share those teachings with my students now. Rather than being Elder Rick, I got a lot of our school district to change it to Brother Rick. It makes it a lot easier for our younger generation to look at me as an older brother. Heights can tap, Tim. Heights can tap, news flesh and tap, Tim. Brothers and sisters, thanking each and every one of you again for all coming together and being here today. Another beautiful day. When Brother Rick starts, he refers to everyone as brother and sister. And it's no longer, I am at this level and you're at this level. We're all in this together. That leadership influence echoes with everyone that's in the building. He was all about Royal Bay and all about the community, but also all about growth and teaching the kids that it's okay to ask questions and it's okay to wonder and it's okay to have curiosity about our local community members. And for having Brother Rick in the building just made that process so much easier. This game was played to settle arguments or disagreements. Too reserved like that in-person contact means a lot the hands-on situation with all of our younger brothers and sisters, to be able to work face-to-face -face with them, to show them. school that played this game, what they were betting against each other, a team bet, would be sit-ups, push-ups, jumping jacks. You're captain here, brother. And you're captain over here, sir. Mix up the bones, put your hands behind your back, put one in each hand and bring your hands out with your knuckles up. Learning how to play one of our games that we play is La Help, the bone game, the stick game. And this game is played across Canada and the U.S. And we share that with all the students and the teachers alike. And we also let them know the history and background of that game. Oh, double catch. Over they go. It can happen that fast. You cannot walk through those communities without Brother Rick being recognized. Out from the crowd will come this little tiny kid and he'll grab his leg and like, Brother Rick, Brother Rick. And the parent will be like, what are you doing? Leave that man alone, leave that man alone. Like, oh no, no, You'll, I know who that is. He knows their name and they know his. Bang, bang. <laughs> you know, boys, I'm really proud of all you guys, eh? That's totally cool. <laughs> Ooh, nice one. <laughs> I remember when I first became chief, um, there's an Aboriginal principal and there's Aboriginal um, teachers. And at the end of the year, they have a Aboriginal graduation. My first year for the Aboriginal grad, there was six students at the grad. The next year after we closed down the rooms, there was 123 students that self-identified as Aboriginal people. They stopped running from the room and started standing up to be Indigenous. I personally want to really thank each and every one of you for allowing me to be a part of your learning in the past four years and for achieving the goals that you have achieved. There's a lot of growth, a lot of work that we have to do as a community and a country, but having someone like Brother Rick in the school makes it easy because you're able to make connections to it and it's not something that's abstract anymore or far removed from you. It's right here in the building but I would like to get to a spot where no one has to hide who they are irregardless of, of what others think. Knocking down these barriers for our younger brothers and sisters, knocking barriers down so that they can be more comfortable and relaxed in the classroom. 
be proud of who you are and where you come from. Don't be ashamed of it. Since Brother Rick has been the mentor in the schools, equality has changed for our children. People don't see us as riding horses and building teepees. They understand that we're people, they understand that we have a culture, and they understand a little bit of what that culture is. And they are not afraid of it. The role of education is to create people who are willing to stand up for themselves and willing to have a voice and willing to ask difficult questions. And I think the community here at school with Brother Rick in the lead saw the ability to do that. <laughs> it has been honestly the most successful part of our programming in the Indigenous Education Department. It helps break down prejudices and unlearn some of the like racist notions that we have inside of ourselves. We're not trying to make students or teachers feel guilty. We're trying to rather bring a, around a dialogue where we're all discussing these things together, where we're all part of reconciliation. Nothing but pride that comes with what's happened in the school district. People keep on asking, how did it happen? How did it get better? It's just everybody's starting to care about each other. The changes I've seen inside the school, the building up of relationships, the teachers of all the different schools, the principals, our school board office, you know, right up to our school trustees, board of directors, the parents and the grandparents. It's about all of us wanting all of our future generation to be able to move up that ladder and not go through the hurt and emotional feelings that we went through. And if they can take anything away from what I share with them, that's a positive. I see us getting bigger, stronger, more inclusive, but there's lots of work to still be done. And we're always going to have to be making sure that everybody looks at each other equal to bring each other together. It's really been an honor to be able to go in and work with them and sharing with them our culture. Thanking them for sharing what they share because that's how we progress, that's how we learn, that's how we move forward. You know, I realize lots of families out there don't have what I have, you know. Don't have much, but I share what I have. I'm not a millionaire, but I'm rich in culture and history rich in friends and share with them and help them out. That's who we are. That's who we are as Mastimuk people, proud people. And that's what I really hope for our younger generation. Unify and work together. Be very respectful of not only your culture, but all the other cultures that you are around that a lot of our brothers and sisters out there around the world could understand what this means in our culture here. Thank you. Haichka. Kleko, kleko. Kela gasla. Sheshe, doje, aligato. Merci beaucoup. Dangavel, tutsins, hawa. Gracias. And then, yeah, that tough language. Thank you. That's what this means in our culture. Ah!